and now I would like to invite Vinakshi Mataji to please come up and say a few words. Hare Krishna. So I've been asked to do a very short lecture on this auspicious inauguration of ISKCON Mississauga. Om Jnana Timnandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chaksho Umli Tamyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Nalane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvasesha Sunyavadi Vrachata Desatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasani Gora Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you very much for all of you coming out today and taking your time, your valuable time to experience this new opening of ISKCON Mississauga. Actually, this opening is the culmination of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu over 500 years ago stating that the holy names of Krishna will be sung in every town and village. And Mississauga is one of those towns and villages. And so through the Parampara system, Srila Prabhupada was given an instruction by his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. And he was instructed to go to the West and spread Krishna consciousness to the Western world. And so Srila Prabhupada took that to heart. And as he finished his Grihastha, his marital duties, his family duties, he still kept that in the back of his mind and in his heart. And he eventually made plans, made arrangements to come to America. And so he did come. He traveled on the Jala Dutta. The word Jala Dutta means sea messenger. How appropriate. He came to give the message of Krishna consciousness. So he left India practically with nothing, only with boxes of books of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he traveled across the ocean. And unlike now, where we can travel by airline, by flight, right? It takes about 8, 10, 12 hours, whatever. He traveled 35 days across the ocean in a cargo ship. And he suffered two heart attacks. But why did he do that? He came to America to follow his guru's instructions and to give us, all of us, the real purpose of life, right? He was the ultimate well-wisher. And he started in New York simply chanting under a tree in Tompkins Square Park. And just by chanting the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And with his purity, with his sincerity, we see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of temples across the world today. And he had that vision. It wasn't like he didn't know what he was doing. He actually had a vision on a bench in New York City. And he said, I can see in the future that there will be so many centers across the world. And so Srila Prabhupada, being our well-wisher, told us how we should live our life, how we should become Krishna conscious, and why we should become Krishna conscious. He did this through his personal instructions, through his letters, through his books, and by his own personal example. The bottom line is, that whatever we pursue in this material life, whatever material endeavors we do, we will not be taking that with us. All of that is futile. The only thing that we can take with us is those points, that devotional service, that bhakti, that we do in the service of the Lord. 
You see, we are all thinking that we are controllers, that we should enjoy. We should enjoy these cars, we can jo enjoy the wonderful scenery, you know, we can accumulate all this money. But Krishna is the ultimate controller. He is the supreme enjoyer. So Srila Prabhupada gave us the lesson that we should be satisfied with whatever Krishna gives us. We don't have to endeavor for more and more and be in a rat race. Rather, we should endeavor more and more to serve Krishna, to open our heart to Krishna. And there are nine ways that we can connect with Krishna. We can hear about Krishna's pastimes, Shravana. We can speak and glorify Krishna, Kirtana. We can meditate on the Lord, Shravana. Right? Uh, sorry, Samara. We can serve at the Lord's feet, Padasevana. We can worship the Lord, do arti, do puja, archana. We can offer prayers, which is vandana. We can become his servant, dasya. And we can become his friend, sakya. And ultimately, atma nivedana, which is surrendering everything to the Lord. So how can we actually open our heart to the Lord? How can we remove the obstacles in our heart that are pursuing material pursuits or having conflicts in the mind, having anxiety, having stress? Well, there is a very nice prayer in Rupa Goswami's Padewali, text 93, which I'm just going to read to you. It's very sweet. It says, O Lord Krishna, I pray that the remnants of your foodstuffs may become as palatable for me as a woman's lips are palatable to her beloved. I pray that the narration of your pastimes may become as sweet to my ears as the words of a young girl are sweet to the ears of her beloved. I pray that the sight of your transcendental form may become as pleasing to my eyes as the beauty of a young bride is pleasing to her husband. I pray that I may always chant your holy name in the same way that a lover reads aloud a letter from his long-separated beloved. You see the, the emotional connection that we can develop for Krishna. That is what we have to strive to do. So this center here in Mississauga actually will help you develop that connection with Krishna, help you do those nine processes of devotional service. So we would request that you take advantage of this new center here in Mississauga. Now you have a center close by to your homes so that you can uh, come and devote and do service and make your life sublime. Understand the purpose of our life. Jai Iskand Mississauga, Jai Shiva Prabhupada, thank you very much, Hare Krishna.